hello guys hello everyone uh, sorry for being late actually there was some network issue uh, therefore uh, so <clears throat> i welcome you all and this I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm supposed to start or not because I just couldn't hear anything from the introduction, just the very, very beginning. But uh, if so, if I'm supposed to, to start, just let me know, uh, say something uh, written or something so I can begin. Yes, ma'am, you can start. Okay. Can you all see my presentation? I cannot see anyone or see anything but my presentation. Yeah. 
Sorry. I'll try to do it like this, even though it's not the whole thing, but anyway. So let's begin. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk about uh, African-American literature. And um, well, the first thing I want to um, talk about is why did I choose to talk about trauma in African-American literature. Well, first of all, this uh, theme, trauma, uh, it has been studied by different areas um, and disciplines. Uh, and some of them, we can uh, say it's psychology, cognitive science, law, history, and cultural and uh, literary studies. It's not going anywhere. I'm sorry. So as I said, um, Trauma has been studied by different areas, such as psychology, cognitive science, law, history, and cultural and literary studies. Uh, so it's a theme that uh, many areas, um, in a way, discuss it. And uh, we can also do our research in literary studies or taking literary texts into consideration, uh, thinking of these other areas as the foundation for our analysis. And um, well, um, Nicol, uh, he poses that literature assumes a great importance on rethinking history and facing its traumatic events, since its fictional quality allows writers to reenact and work through such traumas in a way that historical discourse cannot. So this is very important because uh, by this uh, assumption, uh, Nico poses, we learn or we start thinking of the literary text as a way to see or to uh, study these traumatic events in a way that um, is uh, broader or it's um, different in terms of how we analyze it from the historical, the factual discourse. And um, the, the literature uh, produced in the US um, when discussing trauma uh, will often associate, associate it to racial issues. Uh, as the American society um, see, sees the, the, the difference between blackness and whiteness 
in a very uh, strong sense where uh, whiteness is the norm associated to tenderness, to beauty, and blackness, uh, on the other hand, is mar marginalized and is associated to mistreatment and ugliness. So to bring these, the concept of trauma, which we are going to see in more details uh, later on, uh, but to bring the, the concept of trauma to um, a more concrete uh, realm, um, I chose to explore the, the issue of uh, racial uh, differences or racial issues, uh, in, taking into consideration two literary texts um, by two uh, North American uh, novelists, uh, Black uh, women. One is Toni Morrison, and I'm going to discuss her first novel, which is The Bluest Eye. Uh, which was published in 1970. And uh, just uh, to take a brief uh, summary of it or some, some details that are going to be important for my analysis, it takes place in Ohio in 1941 and tells the story of Pecola, a breed love. Uh, she is a very young African-American girl uh, and her story is um, um, is is um, shown uh, from the point of view of Claudia McTears, McTeer. Uh, it's her point of view uh, that we learn about Pecola, and uh, Claudia is the daughter of Pecola's foster parents. Um, the protagonist, Pecola, grew up following the Great Dep Depression, which uh, occurred between 1929 and 1939. And the other text is uh, Gail Jones' first novel as well, which is Corregidora, uh, published in 1975, and it takes place in K Kentucky in the late 1940s and centers the story around Ursa Corrigidora, a blues singer who was hospitalized after an accident involving a, fight, a flight of stairs. <clears throat> Uh, Jones uses a fragmented style of writing to incorporate the Corregidora family history and of trauma into Ursa's present narrative. Uh, this accident leads us to learn about um, Ursa's, Ursa's trauma, uh, and it allows different generations uh, of women, of Corregidora women, until Usa's present narrative. And what is the goal of my presentation? Uh, is to discuss how trauma appears in the bluest eye and in Corregidora in order to show how Pecola and Usa, respectively, deal with the distressing situation because I want to confirm how gender and race are related to trauma in African-American studies. For this, uh, I used uh, a literary review on trauma and also the reading of these two novels, The Bluest Eye and uh, Corregidora. Now let's start with um, the theory related to trauma, which I'm going to use for my analysis. 
So first, uh, I go back to um, work edited and organized by Care Ruth, which is entitled Explorations in Memory, published in 1995. Uh, and um, she uh, poses, it may be only through this variety that we can learn. In fact, in effect, not only to easy suffering, but to open in the individual and the community new possibilities for change, a change that would acknowledge the, the unthinkable realities of which traumatic experience bear witness. Uh, what does uh, she mean by this variety? Um, we can take into account the responses to different approaches uh, to listening um, to traumatic experiences and histories. Um, so it's it's a it's a different ways of uh, getting to know these experiences, which are different from uh, other ways, but uh, extremely um, extremely uh, important to learn and to approach this uh this material uh as um for analysis and she also published unclaimed experience trauma narrative and history in 1996 and in this text uh, she poses and i quote trauma is understood as a wound inflicted not upon the body but upon the mind, end of, of quote. And um, uh, uh, another piece of, of quote from the same um, paragraph, that knowing and not knowing are entangled in the language of trauma and in the stories associated with it. Uh, so this uh, specific quote allows um, or shows that trauma can leave marks that can or cannot be cognitive, cognitively or emotionally processed uh, or be processed into conscious memories. Um, so not everything that we go through uh, is in the level of consciousness uh, by the, the person who um, had that traumatic experience. Another uh, scholar that also um, researched and published on trauma, published this um, book in 2004, a trauma fiction, uh, which she poses that many novels which address traumatic events make use of narrative forms that do not present or achieve coherence or closure and closure. Instead, they attempt to show and reflect in their own structure the traces of traumatic disruption and discontinuity, thus creating a narrative voice that is fragmented and dispersed. Uh, the way the narrative is develop, developed shows the narrators or the characters' inner uh, state of mind. Um, it's it's uh, therefore 
uh, we as readers uh, have this the have to fill in some gaps uh, that are left by the narrator or the characters. Uh, Steph Krabs uh, associates trauma theory uh, to an area of cultural investigation that emerged in the early 1990s as a product of the so-called ethical turn affecting the humanities. And as, as you could see, the first <clears throat> two texts from the, the very beginning of the studies of trauma um, into literature uh, and other areas of expertise uh, was exactly in the 1990s. So uh, that's that's why I brought uh, that those two um, early texts, uh, not only because of the dates, but also because of the importance of them for the studies of trauma. Um, that is, it emerges from a social context um, of disruption. Uh, so these um, investigations or these um, um, theories, they uh, emerge from these um, contexts of disruption that are um, spread out uh, all over the world. And also, um, quoting from Krabs, um, um, we can, we can, um, we can post this. Uh, and I and I quote: They marginalize and ignore traumatic experiences of non-Western um, or minority cultures. They tend to take for granted the universal uh, validity of definitions of trauma and recovery that have developed out of the history of Western modernity. They often favor or even prescribe a modernist static and or fragmentation and a aporia as uniquely suited to the task of bearing witness to trauma. And they generally disregard the connections between metropolitan and non-Western or minority traumas. As a result of all of, all of this, rather than promoting cross-cultural solidar solidarity, trauma theory risks assisting in the per perpetuation of the very benefits, practices, and structures that maintain existing injustice and inequality. Uh, this is to, to emphasize uh, the distinction and the, the need to um, discuss trauma and traumatic experiences and histories in non-Western uh, uh, and minority cultures uh, such as African-American um, fictions. Another scholar which also uh, discusses a trauma and th tra trauma culture and, and theory uh, he differentiates psychological and physical trauma from cultural trauma. For him, cultural trauma refers to a dramatic loss of identity and meaning, a tear, a tear 
in the social fabric affecting a group of people that has achieved some degree of cohesion. Uh, this can also be associated or this can also be uh, linked to the idea that I was uh, mentioning uh, before, the idea of uh, um, studying and associating trauma with or not often with uh, Western Yes. Sorry, I'm lost. What's going on? Um, I'm already, I was passing the slides and th they were not showing, I, I'm assuming. So let me see in which one I am. One, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, Eight, slide eight. Okay, so let's begin uh, again from here. Um, so uh, as I was saying, um, Ron uh, Ironman, he differentiates the psychological and physical trauma uh, from the cultural trauma. For him, when we um, specify cultural trauma, we are referring to a dramatic loss of identity and meaning, a tear in the social fabric uh, affecting a group of people that has achieved some degree of cohesion. Um, when we, we think of uh, this um, idea of or this uh, conception of trauma, we can associate it with the idea that I was mentioning previously uh, when I was saying that um, to some um, scholars and to some trauma um, research and um, uh, areas of, of research, they do not take into consideration or they do not specify when we are dealing with minority groups or non-Western groups. Uh, and here, uh, what uh, Ironman is uh, pointing out is the um, importance of these cultural uh, frameworks that we have to consider when taking uh, trauma experience, traumatic experiences into account. And um, he also explains that slavery was not a part of reality for many African-American writers uh, as the, the, the ones I chose, I mentioned, and artists uh, who speak about it, but became central to the forging of a collective identity is strongly affected and marked by it. Uh, and um, Gail Jones, Corrigidora and Toni Morrison, The Bluest Eye, 
are good examples of exactly this uh, situation. Not only uh, did not the writers uh, had themselves this experience of slavery, uh, but also part of the characters of their narratives, of their books, uh, also did not experience this, uh, this reality, but suffered uh, the, the circumstances, the context of modern society, uh, which um, in a way uh, have uh, some um, remainings of this structure uh, is still strong and uh, present in, in their lives, in their uh, daily context. Can you pass to the next slide, please? And to uh, wrap up the, the, um, the trauma theory that I want to, to bring to this presentation, um, Jeffrey Alexander um, poses that cultural trauma, so again, talking about the cultural aspect, cultural trauma occurs when members of a collective feel they have been uh, subjected to a horrendous event that leaves indelible um, marks upon their group consciousness marking their memories forever and changing their future identity in fundamental and irrevocable ways. And also, Omi Baba uh, affirms that narrative centered on historical construction, sorry, can help rewrite the past reactivated, relocated, and re-signify it. And it can also submit our understanding of the past and our reinterpretation of the future to an ethics of survival, which allow us to work in and through the present. So these two um, researchers, uh, scholars, uh, they dialogue with the, um, the, the previous uh, researchers that, I'll, that I mentioned. The presentation. Okay, so let's let's go to. I'm I'm not I'm not moving uh, my fingers here in terms of the the slides uh, because I think mine is not working. Okay, very good. Uh, so bringing um, back the ideas presented in the beginning of my presentation. Uh, literature reenact traumas differently from historical uh, texts. Uh, now, let's um, move on and uh, see how trauma is presented in the first novel, The Blue Eye. So to begin, uh, I want to emphasize uh, the fact uh, or to emphasize the name the character uh, was given and the association of this name to beauty and to the, uh, the ideal of whiteness. So when getting, when getting to know Maureen Pearl, at school, Pecola learns that she was named after Peola, a character from the movie Imitation of Life. 
Paola is perceived as beautiful by the people around her, and she is able to satisfy the Western white standard of beauty because of her light skin. So at the time, <clears throat> uh, Paola, um, although she was classified by the parameters uh, in American society of that time, uh, classified as black, she could pass as a white person. So that's why she symbolized or she, she could uh, satisfy the Western um, white standard of beauty. On the other hand, Pecola, uh had a very dark uh, skin uh, color and was perceived because of that as ugly by the community that surrounds her, that surrounds her. Additionally, as much as she wants to, she cannot successfully, uh, successful, uh, she cannot be successful, sorry, She cannot be successful in her pursuit of the white ideal of beauty. And the quotation that I, I, I took from the book is, the master had said, you are ugly people. They had looked about themselves and saw nothing to contradict the, st the statement, so uh, contradicted the statement. So, in fact, support for it leaning of them from every billboard, every movie, every glance. Yes. They had said, you are right. And they look the ugliness in their hands through it, through it as a man, mantle over them and went around, around the world with it. So this quotation... Uh, it marked their, the, this experience uh, shown in this quotation, marked their memory, marked the memory of these people, of, the, of uh, Black people in that community. And their, in, in their sense, uh, in their sense of identity, especially in uh, young girls, like Pecola, exemplifying in the sense what Alexander, um, one of the scholars mentioned, and Caruth explained about the association of a uh, trauma and these um, consciousness uh, memories that are um, left. Uh, uh, consciously or unconsciously uh, in our memories. Next slide, please. Furthermore, Pecola suffers physical violence, first at the hands of her classmates when they throw rocks at her. So, um, uh, very strong, also very strong um, violence. And then uh, an even stronger uh, violence because she was raped uh, by her father, uh, Jolie. Uh, she also receives verbal abuse and social ostracizing from her community. 
which we could identify as microaggressions. So several microaggressions she suffered throughout her life. Um, one of the excuses uh, her father gives for, for abusing uh, her, for raping her, is that he suffered sexual humiliation when he was younger uh, under the gaze of two racist whites. Uh, and this uh, humiliation was associated with him being forced to rape Darlene. Um, so uh, he, in a way, uh, takes this as his excuse for, for abusing her, uh, his daughter, as if uh, this is something that uh, someone could excuse, be excused for. Um, so Piccola uh, dreams to escape her reality uh, by having blue eye, blue eyes. Um, and it is the result of ter terrible traumatic events, the miscarriage of her baby uh, when she was uh, an adult, uh, who was the product of incest and rape. Uh, the whole ordeal finally becomes more than she can uh, withstand and she descends into madness. Next, please. So this madness, um, how, how does the, the book um, deals with it or talks about it? She engages on a dialogue with some sort of imaginary friend. Everyone's jealous. Every time I, I look at somebody, they look off. So she detaches from reality um, as the result of these uh, traumatic experiences she had uh, in her life. The damage done was total. Uh, she spent her days, her tendril, um, sap green get days, walking up and down, up and down, her head jerking to the, the beat of a drummer so distant only she could hear. Elbows bent, hands on shoulders, she flailed her arms like a bird in an eternal, grotesquely, a futile effort to fly. Beating the air, sorry, beating the, the air, a winged that grounded bird intent on the blue void, it could not reach could not even see, but which filled the valleys of the mind. So that's how detached she became of reality uh, because of this traumatic experience. Now let's go to the last text uh, that I'm going to, to discuss, which is uh, Corrigidora, um, and can you move on, please? In this case, um, we have a different set uh, because Ursus uh, is a generation of um, Black women who suffered abuse. Um, so uh, Ursus, Graham, and great gram, uh, they were supposed to make generations. That is, to spread the horrors 
of old men corrigidora and to adopt a belief that all men are evil. Uh, continues this, uh, these ideas continues to haunt and manipulate her thoughts, actions, and relationships. So uh, these um, previous generations of women in Ursa's life wanted her to, in a way, reenact uh, these traumatic experiences they lived. Uh, and I quote, I wanted a song that would touch me, touch my life and theirs. Theirs, uh, her mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. I thought of the girl who had to sleep with her master and mistress, her father, the master, her daughter's father, the father of her daughter's father. So it, it was a succession, succession of rapes and uh, birth of uh, girls who became also raped or who were also raped by their father um, over and over uh, for uh, three generations. Usa's story unfolds as she revisits her marriage to Mud Thomas, a jealous tobacco field worker uh, who wants Ursa to stop singing once they marry so he could support me, uh, quotation, support her. Um, like Alexander and uh, Baba explained previously, uh, um, as I said, Ursa reenacts the past uh, but keep the traumatic experience, uh, reenacts the, the, the past uh, to keep the traumatic experience alive. Can you pass, please? But uh, Ursa refuses to give up her place on stage. Uh, that is what her husband, what her... Um, man wants her to do. Um, and, and one night, Mutt arrives drunk and in a struggle with Ursa, push, pushes her down the stair, forcing her to abort her pregnancy and have a hysterectomy, which destroys her, her dirty uh, as a corrigidora woman which is to make generations. Uh, I, and I quote, I lay on my back feeling as if more than the womb had been taken out. So this was something really big to the Corrigidora women. Uh, and Ursa now uh, could not uh, continue this legacy. Although Ursa bears the Corrigidora name like her mother and grandmother, she is not Corrigidora's child, as I said previously. The only Corrigidora woman who has a different father. She remarks, they squeezed Corrigidora into me and I sank back in return. I am not Corrigidora's daughter. Look at me. So um, she uh, did not uh, did not experience this trauma, but she um, took, uh, carried the marks of this traumatic experience the previous generation suffered. And uh, she, in a way, uh, although it, it was meant to be that she carried on this legacy, uh, she um, 
was um, she she uh, in a way contradicted uh, that um, duty uh, by saying that it was, she was not his daughter, so um, she, it, it was not um, she she did not have that kind of experience uh, to uh, carry on, but. Uh, it was something that she would do through her songs. Uh, let's move on. Finally coming to an end. Ursa's inability to uphold and pass down the generational curse of the Corregidora women victimizes her until she finds a way to rid herself of the family curse. So she um, feels the, uh, the weight uh, on her shoulders to carry this family curse. But her songs, uh, in a way, are her way out of this um, this tradition, so to speak, her survivor rests in submission to love that destroys the family lineage. Uh, so the, the, the relationship, although abusive with mud, uh, in a way shows her a different kind of relationship that a woman I can have with a man. And I quote uh, this piece of uh, Corrigidora's novel. They burned all the documents, Ursa, but they didn't burn what they put in their minds. Anyway, they didn't, they ain't nothing that, they ain't nothing you can do when they tear the paper out of the book, and they ain't no record of it. They probably burn the pages. So that's why the, the these women uh, want to pass on uh, their uh, struggle uh, and their traumatic experience because the only thing that in a way carry on this um, this um, experience, this atrocity, is their uh, word, is the, um, the, the make generation way of passing the legacy, of passing the struggle and the, the trauma. Uh, because there is no, no paper, nothing uh, that register that uh, these things, things happened in the past. And finally, last, please. And my final considerations, trauma. Uh, was then uh, presented in the bluest eye, uh, and we can associate the, this um, experience uh, with rape and incest, and in Corregidora also with incest and violence. Pecola and Ursa respectively, uh, they... Um, at the, the, the end of the novel, uh, as a result of this traumatic experience, Pecola becomes mad and Ursa uh, finds a way through art, through music, to, in a way, um, um, being relieved from this burden uh, she has to carry. And finally, uh, African American studies um, also uh, is linked to uh, studies related to female body, 
uh, which is always um, embedded with double prejudice, the prejudice related to gender and also race. And then at the very end of my presentation, I presented my references and now I'm open to questions, suggestions, um, anything you want to share with me about my analysis, my reading. And also uh, after the references, there is my, um, my email. Uh, if you want to uh, contact me uh, with suggestions or questions or anything. Yes, the, the last the last slide, please. I'm going to, to write it here, my email. So in case someone wants to contact me. I'm sorry to it took me longer than I expected. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your attention and patience. No questions, comments. Do you think that African American writers have unfair, unfairly focused most of their works on slavery and discrimination we brought about the propensity to portray the horrific? If not, well, this is the, this is a very very difficult question, um, but um, nowadays here in in Brazil we are also uh, facing this um, we are also facing this this kind of uh, of situation. Some people. Um, question um, the the fact that um, some some black Brazilians they they are fighting for their rights um, similarly to to the way the the African Americans do uh, of course uh, decades uh, behind but we are still uh, doing. And uh, it, uh, I personally think it's very, very important because um, some of these issues they are not um, they are not simple uh, historical facts. But as I, I said in my presentation, they left uh, really deep. Uh, traumatic experiences um, in different levels. Um, it can be physical, it can be psychological. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, as we do not suffer those things, we don't see how, how bad or how a deep um, these uh, ex th these facts affect uh, the people. Um, I don't know if I answered the question, but uh, my position is is that it's not uh, it's it's not a matter of 
only talking about it. It's a matter of talking about it until uh, you see social changes that are really deep in the sense of not letting it happen again or not uh, disregarding the facts of it. Have I answered the question? Um, I think you probably thought of African-American literature um, instead of Afro-Asian literature. Um, if you're thinking of Afro-Asian literature, unfortunately, uh, I won't be able to help you because uh, I haven't read uh, anything related to African Afro-Asian literature. But um, in relation to African-American literature, um, the, the difference um, from other literature, um, so to speak, is um, the, the voice of these um, writers, a male and female, um, that are talking about experiences um, that are unique um, for them, that they um, experience firsthand or sometimes secondhand, um, but they learn from past generations in their family, and they usually uh, write about it. Um, so in a way, it's the, the idea of giving voice to those who were historically speaking, uh, silenced, marginalized, uh, or when they were when they were when they appeared in literary texts uh the the characteristics of these um characters were usually uh stereotypical um so they did not represent uh, the population or the population did not feel represented um, in these texts. So uh, the, the big difference in my point of view is the power of a voice, of being able to express 
uh, this voice that has been historically marginalized, oppressed um, um, for centuries. I don't know if I got uh, the the meaning of of your question. Um, There are there are many um, many scholars. Um, it really depends on um, what what kind of text uh, you are thinking um, about, because depending on the text depending on the literary piece, uh, you're going to focus, um, like for example, uh, for this presentation, I brought some scholars that uh, dealt with a trauma studies related to African-American studies. So depending on the, the area uh, or the kind of tax, or the the if it's it's a if it's a minority group or something, uh, you can you can uh, add other scholars in, uh, into this list. Well, um, the racism um, is a violence. And um, in different scales, it will um, cause uh, some kind of trauma uh, to the, the, the person who suffers uh, racism. So um, it it as as in the in the text um, that you could see two different reactions towards uh, this traumatic experience. One of the the characters uh, went mad, and the other 
survived and resignified uh, the traumatic experience. Um, her, uh, her and her past generation suffered. So it really, um, it really depends uh, first on the trauma itself <clears throat> and how uh, it affects uh, the, the the consciousness, affects the mind of of the the person, because depending on it, uh, the the consequences can vary uh, from madness, as in the text, to um, uh, you being able to move on and to um, construct uh, a different life for, for yourself. So it really depends not only on the trauma itself, uh, but also on how the, uh, the person uh, is affected by that traumatic experience. Um, it, I, w I would say that it, depending on the, the generation, depending on the, the, the writers, depending on the, what is going on in the society, um, African Americans, like other minority groups, uh, writers from minor other minority groups, they were focused on different issues related to um, their community. Um, so nowadays, because we we can see. Um, daily basically um some some violent uh attacked uh on the streets uh at schools uh related to racism um violence um against black people uh so this is something that is very present um in in the US nowadays so because of that, uh, writers uh, tend to write about it, to uh, take these th this context and fictionalize it uh, with stories that they heard, they experienced themselves. So, but uh, it's something that it's it's very up to date. When I was um, answering one of the other questions, I also thought of um, some books that I um, that I read related, but in this case was not was not um, necessary related to the African community in these countries, but with minority communities. Um, for example, um, the Aboriginal people in Australia, uh, the Maori people in New Zealand, they also um, have this, this concept uh, or, or experience, as you put it, uh, of the trauma uh, 
that you can um, grasp in the literature they write. Um, so usually when we talk about minority groups, um, you can find texts that will um, bring some kind of uh, traumatic experience from one way or, or another. I was thinking also of, the, of a novel from um, a writer from South Africa. In this case, is related to, to the African reality, but um, it's interestingly, uh, in Africa, in, in South Africa, of course, the majority of the population is Black. Uh, but uh, despite the number, uh, the power is not uh, with them. So uh, the effects of racism, of prejudice, of uh, lack of power, uh, lack of access to certain certain um, facilities, to certain uh, aspects of, of uh, social life um, brings this, this uh, clash between uh, white and blacks and also these experiences of trauma. So um, thinking really briefly uh, about it in other contexts, uh, I can think of these three. Just to name uh, the Anglo-Saxon world.
Mm, okay. Um, no problem. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for coming and hope to see you in, uh, in another um, event like this. Thank you so much for inviting me and I hope I answered all the questions and uh, you have now my contact if you like to, to share um, some information or ask more specific questions, feel free to do so. Okay, uh, bye-bye. Uh, I would really would like to have a picture of all of us uh, here, uh, but I think um, this is not possible anyway.